Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is at work. And today I'm doing just a little knife sharpening talk. I love doing these little episodes where I just sit and talk about knife sharpening and some of the things I'm doing. And maybe it helps some of you guys learn a little bit more about sharpening. And we have a lot of giveaways coming up here really soon on a bunch of sharpening stuff. So stay tuned for that. Now... Today I want to talk about some of the experimenting I've been doing with different types of edges and stones and compounds and stuff like that. Now, when you really get deep into sharpening, it really opens up a whole nother world to knives, which is something I love about sharpening. Not only is it very therapeutic for me, because it is, it's absolutely therapeutic for me, and I enjoy it very much, but it also opens up a whole nother enjoyment to knives, and not just pocket knives or fixed blades, but also chef knives, your kitchen knives, other tools, you know, learning and knowing how to sharpen it can greatly help you, whether it's from scissors to yard tools, whatever. It's it's amazing um, when you know how to sharpen. And, you know, after a while you start, you get really good at it. And you start playing around. <laughs> you start seeing how sharp you can get a knife to, which you do from the start anyways, but I just mean like you start taking edges to another level or possibly seeing how long you can make an edge last. Like instead of making an edge for sharpness, you make an edge for longevity because that's very important, that happy medium ground. You know, you can make an, an edge incredibly sharp um, but maybe it might not hold an edge for uh, a crazy long time. And then there's the ones that are incredibly sharp, but they just last so long. And then there's edges that are built for longevity. They're built for strength, like convex edges. You can play around with different angles to get different types of performance. And then there's different finishes, right? There's different grip finishes. And, you know, using the right stone for the right steel is very important. I get asked a lot of times, what, what, what stones do you recommend the most? And I recommend diamonds the most. And I do that because they can cut any steel. They're easy to keep up with, easy to maintain, and they work really good. They, you can take some of these super steels and make not only an edge that lasts a long time on them, but is incredibly sharp and it, they cut very fast. So you can see what you're doing on the stone a lot easier. And when I say diamond plates, I mean these kind. Just the metal backed diamond plate stones. They just have a layer of diamonds over the top. They will eventually wear out. They really will. And if you really wanted to be crazy, you can get the Veneve Diamond Stones, which are infused with diamonds. Now, these last an incredibly long time, but they are also very, very expensive. That's why we are going to give a set of these away to you guys. So, the diamond plates. They have a layer over the surface, but these things aren't crazy expensive. You can get three of these right now down in the links of the description for 50 bucks these exact same ones two by six plates you get a 300 a 600 and a 1200 grit now these diamond plates they can be expensive but three of these for 50 bucks is a great deal and you can get the big ones for about a hundred bucks for the three for the three different grits now there's a lot of different sharpening stones out there I mean, there is a whole world of different types of sharpening stones and devices and everything. And I've played around with different stones and different finishes, but I do recommend, though, diamonds for people trying to learn how to sharpen. Now let's talk about the finishes I'm talking about. So, I've been working on different finishes and mixing different finishes so like let's say this is a 400 grit and this would be like the edge the edge of the knife right here right where my nails running down the edge of the knife say if that's a 400 grit edge that's a 600 grit let's say that's a, a thousand grit 
let's say that's a 2000 grit and that's a 5000 grit mirror edge right there, right? Complete mirror edge. And if you zoom in, you can see it has little teeth on it. But I've been playing around with, say, putting a mirror edge on and then going back after it's nice and flat. I have a super flat. A super, super flat mirror edge, super flat mirror edge, and then I go back to it, and I go down the edge with a 600 grit stone. This one I didn't do it to, I was just showing you what I'm talking about. And then I go back down it with, say, a 600 grit stone. And I only do it a couple times. Then the edge is kind of like this, where it has some teeth. And think of this as like a microscopic level, right? There's teeth, but then in between the teeth, it's kind of the polished finish. So it's kind of like this, where if you think of this as the knife, I know this isn't a scale or anything, but you have the grip pattern over the top of, say, if the white part of the edge underneath the black lines is polished, you have the teeth just popping out everywhere. And it kind of creates a saw-like. But in between each one of these grits is still polished. And then the top rim of the edge, a lot of times, I found, was still polished. So when I would go to, say, cut that shelf let's say this is the shelf right here at the top of the edge bevel there's a shelf there well that's going to be slippery for going through materials because it's polished so it's going to after you get into materials it's going to slide through a little bit better than if there was a little bit of resistance say from the grit or whatever you know we're talking about little tiny details right now but it really changes or really creates different performances depending on the things you're cutting and i was really liking not only that but the way it looked and the other day i did this knife right here i sharpened i even did it on a video and then i came back across it with some diamond compounds which i'm still practicing with i'm still working on but I came back across it with these diamond compounds. Now I have some other compounds just like this. They come in, a, they're a little bit smaller tubes, but they're from aluminum oxide. So they don't have the bite that these ones do. I'm really liking these though. And the aluminum oxide is fantastic too. I really like the aluminum oxide. It doesn't last as long as the diamonds though. I found that the 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 one downside to the aluminum oxide paste is that it, it wears out over time. So I'll be able to, say, strop, I don't know, three, four knives, give or take, you know. Um, and then I'm going to have to reapply the, the paste. Now, I could probably get more than that, but I'm just, you know, saying. So on this one, you'll see, let me paste it this way. We will zoom in here and you see the grip pattern. Now this is a mirror polish and then it has a light, a very light grip pattern over the top of it. You can see the little striations or the, the grip pattern. Now it was an absolute mirror before I did that and it still kind of is. I bet you could read. Let me grab this. I bet you could still read off of it. Oh, yeah. But I like the edge a lot. It's very sharp. Um, It felt a little more keener, I feel like. Or let me say this. That's not like what I'm talking about when I said this thing, though. That's a little different because that's stropping compound. So that makes these teeth smaller. So it's going to be finer. Now, um, 
what I'm talking about is from an actual diamond stone. So like what I would do is I would take and go off of my highest grit with one of these. I would take my highest grit, which would be in the absolute mirror, and then I would go across it with one of these, with a diamond plate, 600 grit. I don't know. Yeah, this is 600 grit. So one of these. And the finish would be like, like I said, like this. And it would be incredibly sharp, incredibly flat, but it would have the mirror underneath it still on a microscopic level. Like I'd have to really zoom in with my eye loop. And I was, I'm really enjoying that type of finish on an edge. Now, there's lots of other finishes. And sometimes it's kind of hard to go through all of that and get an absolute mirror edge and then say, bang, I'm going <laughs> to throw 600 grit across it now. But, uh, you know, because it, you took so much time to get that mirror edge, this one's kind of, uh, this one's going to need some honing soon but uh you know after putting an absolute mirror edge on a knife then all of a sudden bang now i really love a 600 grit edge i also like a mirror edge i like them all i love all edges i find benefits to them all you know it just depends on what i'm doing with the knife what i'm using the knife for and you know depending on the angle i'm going to be sharpening at too but uh but 600 grit is a, a grit that i really really like and also for people beginning to sharpen it's very easy to use a 300 grit and a 600 grit two stones that's it bang bow and you have a fantastic edge not only fantastic you have a hair whittling beautiful crazy sharp edge with a lot of bite, a whole lot of bite. Now, the compounds that I've been working with. Now, I've noticed that, so with these compounds, this one right here, this black one, this thing is so aggressive. <laughs> you can pretty much sharpen your knife on this. I mean, you could literally put this compound on some leather and take a edge that has some problems like say this is a factory edge um and go across now you're gonna want to hold the right angle and i'm not trying to talk people out of sharpening their knife i'm just saying there's ways to to keep up with your edge in between sharpening. That way you don't have to sharpen as much if you're trying to get the most out of that steel. Now, you can literally use this and you will bring your edge right back. I mean, not only that, you could damn near sharpen off of it. And I know it's not actually sharpening, you're basically just re putting grit on your edge and knocking off any problems so it's not removing steel but it's it's definitely putting a grit on that edge and um and i'm sure it's removing steel as well um, on a small level but going through say from this one to this one to this one it, you can you know put a new finish on your edge without ever touching a stone um and there's lots of diamond sprays and stuff like that. Now, you want to be careful, though, because if you're not, you will lay the, you will try to strop and you will scratch the whole, you know, the whole finish on your edge up. So you want to make sure you're holding the right angle when you're using stuff like the black one. You can get away, away with using the yellow one without probably doing too much damage. That black one, that thing will, it'll definitely scratch the finish on your edge, or on your knife, meaning like the stone wash or whatever, if you're not careful. So you wanna be careful when using it, but it works very well. And if you're not into sharpening, or you're not good at sharpening, getting some good stropping compounds can help you in between while you're learning sharpening. Or while you're, uh, you know, like say if you don't have the money maybe for a sharpening uh, device. These are like five bucks, right? So now you 
probably don't want to get the black one because it could leave just a little bit too much grit at the edge. You probably would want the green or the yellow. Um, but if you have the money, you know, you can get all three, start with the black, go to the green, then go to the yellow. Um, and they have all different kinds. Th these are from beneath, just so you know. Um, but I, you know, like I said, I've been, uh, you know, I've been using normally, normally my favorite stropping compound is just the white compound is just the white compound right here. You have the white and the green. These are like 10, 12 bucks for this little box and it lasts for a long time. Now I also have these ones right here, like these tubes, which these tubes work really good. It goes down to um, half a micron right there and they work very well, but they don't cut nowhere near as fast as these Veneve ones. All right, guys, now that I'm sure the only people left here are people that really care about sharpening, if you guys leave a comment in the comment section talking about why you want a set of Veneve Diamond Stones, I will pull your name in about a week, and I will, I will pull, pull someone's name and give these away. Um, I will do it randomly, so I'm not just going to pick whoever, but I would like you to say something about Veneve so that I know you watched up into this point of the video. You have two stones here, which have four grits. You can get an absolute mirror edge. You basically got um, all the way up to about 3,800 grit if you were going to look at it like from a, like a diamond point of view or from a grip point of view, I should say. This stone right here, you can sharpen on without a problem. It's probably better for you to start at like a 300 grit diamond plate first and then move to this, but you can absolutely start with this one. Go to this one, then, uh, then this side, then this side, you'll have an absolute mirror edge. Now these are not brand new, these are the Phoenix stones, so they're not the other stones that I just got from Veneve. Um, you can see they are a little thinner. They're, they're one millimeter instead of two millimeters thick, but these things last a very long time and they have a lot, a lot of life on them. Now you're gonna have to get yourself uh, a little, um, stone to clean them with and everything i will send them to you perfectly clean but you're you're gonna want to get something to to clean them with especially the higher higher grit ones so leave a comment down below say something about veneve i love you guys merry christmas